there's everything. Um, and just take a moment, and if you don't have your communion stuff ready to go, you can grab that right now while you got the chance. So if you need to grab your bread or juice or water, whatever you have, you can do that. And uh, yeah. So um, this past Sunday, we talked about creation and the fall and Adam and Eve were created in the image of God given authority to rule over all creation. And then the devil makes himself look like a serpent, convinces Adam and Eve to uh, fall into the same sin that he uh, partake, partook in, uh, which was to try to be like God. And thus the fall of man began. And so in light of that, we're going to just take a moment and we're going to pray and uh, ask that we'd have the right perspective um, today, remembering what it is that Jesus accomplished. Lord, we thank you for who you are, that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, and that um, when you knew that man was going to fall, you already had a plan. And that plan was to send your son to live the life that we should have lived and then die on the cross in our place for our sins. And so today I pray that, Lord, we would have, again, that right perspective, that we would have open hearts and minds before you and just remember our great need for our Savior. Amen. All right. And so... Um, Today, the goal is just for us to be a grateful people. We want to just appreciate and remember what Christ did for us. And um, because perfection was undone by trying to be like God, um, mankind has never been perfect since. And we need to remember that we're not perfect but we serve a God who is and who is gracious and he's kind and he's compassionate. Um, you've heard me say this before possibly, but uh, you, you've, you've heard other people say, God doesn't expect you to be perfect. And, and that is an absolute lie. It's a lie that uh, comes from the devil. It's not true at all. Uh, God in his holiness absolutely does expect perfection from us. He's a perfect God and deserves no less than perfection. And God takes holiness, perfection so seriously uh, that even the angels who minister to him in his presence have to be perfect. That if people interact with them, the angels, uh, people want to die because those people realize how broken, how messed up they are. We see them fall on their knees as if dead. And that's just getting in the presence of the angels. And so the people want to even worship the angels mistakenly. And the angels are like, no, 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 don't do that. I'm, I'm not God. Don't worship me. But because people realize how broken they are, once they get into the presence of holiness the, and righteousness, they, they realize how, again, broken and messed up they are. And so uh, we most certainly are messed up. We are all broken. It doesn't take long for us to live our lives to realize that we've done things wrong, that we've hurt someone or uh, been hurt ourselves. We live in a broken world. And yet, God still demands perfection. He doesn't lower the bar for us. Perfection is still perfection. It is still the standard. God is perfect. And, and Jesus himself said in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, in the midst of uh, the Sermon on the Mount, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. That was part of the call. It's part of how we are to live is in perfection. So Jesus, he lived the perfect sinless life, and yet we can't. And that's why in Revelation chapter 5, 
or sorry, two, chapter two, verse five, it says, remember the height from which you've fallen. Realize how broken you are. Romans chapter three, uh, verse 23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So none of us is perfect. None of us has in and of ourselves right standing with God. But there's Jesus, and Jesus came and lived the perfect life. He was perfect. He was perfection. He was sinless. He did what we couldn't do. And, and if you remember last week's sermon in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, we see that God kills an animal for Adam and Eve to make clothes for them. God actually does the first sacrifice. Death enters the world at that point when God takes the first life, making clothes that cover the shame and the sin of Adam and Eve. And oftentimes, I, I don't think we really wrap our minds around the fact that it's God that actually did that first. We think that it was people. We think that people were the first ones to die. But no, it was an animal that God killed because blood needed to be shed. And, and, and that's the, the sad part. That's the, God is the one who did that sacrifice, that first sacrifice. And then Jesus did that once and for all, doing something that we could not do in and of ourselves. So Jesus, God, he has this perfect standard. And what Jesus did is he came down from that bar to pull us up to it. He's the one that fills that gap. So in Romans chapter 3, verse 24, it says, because of the work of Jesus, all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness. So to de demonstrate God's perfection, Jesus died for us because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So it's not because of what we can do. We're broken. We're not perfect. It is the work of Christ. It's his righteousness that we receive. We are made right because of him, which should cause us to be so, so thankful, cause us to be so, so grateful. You can watch a, a myriad of clips and movies from different scenes and, and, and see what it is that Jesus went through and to know that even the most gruesome of details does not accurately sum up what he actually went through. Jesus took the punishment that we could never, ever have withstood. Because it wasn't only the physical punishment. He took on the sin of the world on himself. And so he was just so broken himself as a result of this. He was our high priest. He's the one who, who took it on and went before God. He was our sacrifice, who died in our place for our sin. And so we are made perfect in the sight of God because of Jesus. So again, in that same way with Adam and Eve, that God is the one who covered the sin and the shame in his grace of Adam and Eve because of the work of Jesus, our sin our shame was covered once and for all. So we live our lives in thankfulness, recognizing again that we're not perfect, but Jesus is our perfection. Jesus is the one who fills that gap between us and perfection. So we are a grateful people for what he did. His death on the cross is so important as it's where our forgiveness comes from. When Jesus died on the cross, he did it for our sin. He forgave us, conquering sin, conquering sin. And that should just 
not only cause you to kind of get excited, but create a freedom knowing that the weight of all the dumb things that you've ever done, whether intentionally or unintentionally, or all the things that you should have done that you didn't do. Jesus took all that upon himself and forgives us of our sin, which is amazing because we're not perfect. We are the imperfect ones who damaged the relationship with the perfect one. And yet he in his perfection came down and made us right with him to stand justified before God. We've talked about this before, justified, never sinned. We have right standing with God. So although our human relationships may be tainted, even though our human relationships may be battered in some way, shape, or form, because of the work of Christ, if we walk in that forgiveness and accept it, accept his grace, we stand in right relationship with God. And so again, I hope that's encouraging to you to know that the work of Christ on the cross is just this amazing picture of perfection coming down to cover our imperfection so that we can stand in perfection of the perfect one. So um, just as you're sitting there, if there's something between you and God that you've never confessed, I want you to know that you can be forgiven of that. Maybe there's those things that you did in the past that you regret and you still kind of hold on to that unforgiveness. Today is a great opportunity to remember that again, his perfection is what covers you. And so you can seek his forgiveness for that. And you can walk in that forgiveness. So we're going to take a few moments and we're just going to close our eyes and be grateful. And so think like as long as the list is, maybe it's only from this week, but maybe you can think of those big moments from your life where you know you messed up. And I want you to specifically thank God for covering that because you can't. So just be thankful before him and in your heart and in your mind, just be grateful. We were going to listen to the song, but it doesn't sound good coming through. So I'm just going to read the lyrics. I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray and find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. 
Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And when before the throne, I stand in him complete. Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain and he washed it white as snow. So we're now going to take communion and remember what Christ did. So if you have your, your bread or your water, whatever it is, again, it's, it's more about the remembrance than about the items. Um, I once took communion with a pita bread and uh, lemonade. And uh, it was probably one of the most impactful impacting uh, communion experiences I've ever had because it was with our missions team and uh, we've been doing life together for for over a week and a bit from different places uh, a bunch of people from Scotland England and BC one person from the states and we were serving together And then we remember, took time to remember what it is that Christ did. And so I'll be reading from uh, Luke chapter 22, starting with verse 14. And again, this is at the Last Supper. So Jesus is having his last meal with the apostles. And when the hour came, Jesus and the apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave, gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The son of man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to the man who betrays him. And they began to question among themselves, which of them it might be who would do this. But interestingly enough, it's all of us that ultimately betrayed God because we're not perfect. And Jesus still died for all of us. And so we take this bread and this drink and we, we do this in remembrance of him. So we'll take the, the bread first, as most people traditionally do. And uh, if you're with me, you got the, the wafer if you're here on Sunday. If, if, you, if you weren't, you might have a piece of bread and that's okay. Or you can have a Mars bar. I don't mind. But it's about taking it in remembrance of him. Remembering that his body was broken for you. And so we're going to take this now and do this in remembrance of him. And again, his blood was poured out for us. And so we are grateful for what he did for us. 
And so when we take the cup, we do it in remembrance of him, what he did. That idea of remembrance is in thankfulness, we remember what he did. So let's partake of the cup. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to take two to three minutes and uh, if you're comfortable, I just want you to feel free to share um, and just say uh, like why you're thankful for, for what he did, how it changed your life. I know that none of you were prepared for this and that's okay, um, but there's power in our testimony. And so uh, why are you thankful? Doesn't have to be a complicated answer. It doesn't have to be some in-depth, well-thought-out uh, answer. It's just from the heart, why are you thankful for what he did? So if you want to share, you can just unmute yourself. And if no one shares, that's okay. But I'll mute myself. <laughs> I can share. Um, so I know for me, like I wasn't a Christian my whole life. So I went to church as a kid and it was something that we just kind of did. It didn't really mean anything. Um, and then as I, I was almost an adult, but I was about 17 when I came to be saved. And for me, it gave me purpose and peace. Because right before I got saved, there was a lot of questioning things in life and trying to figure out what to do with myself <laughs> and find my way in the world. And um, I know I struggled a lot without God in my life. So having him in my life has been wonderful. I always have something to look forward to the next day when I wake up in the morning, knowing that he's there and that there is a reason why we're all here. So I like that. That's awesome. Anyone else? It's Laura. <laughs> and I just, I just wanted to say that I am very, very grateful that even in the darkest moments or the worst parts of life, I know I'm never alone. And God is always with us and always with me, regardless of the situation and circumstance. And that I'm truly grateful for. So I'll take a moment to share. I actually came to Christ at a very early age. I was five years old when I accepted him. So I often grew up thinking, wow, I don't have some dramatic story about you know a life of hardcore something and then turning around my uh, family was a Christian family I was raised in a Christian home and I made a sincere commitment to Christ at an early age but what I have is a testimony of God's goodness to me throughout my life I remember as a teenager when my family was falling apart I actually prayed one night. I said, God, even if I want to run away from you, don't ever let me keep me with you. And you know what? Through it all, I believe God has honored that prayer. He has been faithful to me. And as anyone who's been a Christian for any length of time can testify, we go through dry spells. We all do. We all struggle at some point. But thank God he's just so faithful to me. And I appreciate that. And Xander just swiped away my screen. So I don't know if you heard all that. <laughs> we, you, did. we did. We oh. did. <laughs> that was amazing. Anyone else?
He's a really faithful God in my life. I was 13 when I asked him into my heart. I talked to people about Jesus before. Um, I, you know, I went to a Baptist Sunday school, and so I knew all about salvation, and I would explain salvation to people, but I was at a church camp one night when I was 13, and I realized when the pastor made the call for people to become a Christian, I realized I really hadn't prayed that myself. Like, I never had that starting point. Like, I always believed it, but I didn't really ever have a, a point where I really made a point that I really believed it to him. And uh, so that's when I was 13, that's when that happened in my life. And as a teenager, sometimes at high school, I didn't make the best of friends with my convictions and the things I had to say. But um, I remember in grade 11 thinking, maybe if I just kind of moderated a little bit, you know, then people would maybe um, believe me and, and listen to me a little better. It wasn't until I was 17 and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit that it really made a bigger difference in my life than I was really assured that I was totally saved. I was assured of what I really understood. And I seemed to have a little more wisdom on how to explain it to people without thumping them over the head with my Bible. So, um, so I've always enjoyed doing stuff with kids and kids ministry and explaining salvation to kids. And sometimes I worried though, that if they were real young and asked Jesus into their heart, if you kind of inoculate with them with the gospel, instead of really explaining and them, you know, cause my kids themselves were very young when they made commitments. And I, I, I can, I was concerned because I was so busy doing stuff in the church all the time that maybe I was, I don't know, maybe not helping my kids out. But now that they're big and they talk to me about it, we have very intelligent discussions about what went on. And I, I guess I didn't scar them too badly in all my zealousness. <laughs> so anyway, but I thank the Lord that he is very faithful. And any mistakes we make on his for his glory, like he seems to help us work them through. That's great. Thank you, Judy. Is there anyone else? Awesome. Well, being grateful and remembering what uh, Christ accomplished for us is, is key. Coming back to that first love, remembering how far we've fallen and our deep need for the Savior. So um, just as you go through the rest of the day, remembering that Jesus died in your place for your sin. Uh, and we look forward to the resurrection. And I don't want you to be a, a downer and not remember the fact that Christ, he did come back to life. I don't want you to mourn, uh, but I do want you to remember what he went through on our behalf. And so just as you go through today, so as you have lunch, as you eat your food, and if you're having bread and you break it, or you drink a cup, or you're taking apart something for your meal. Remember that his body was broken for you and his blood was poured out for you. And so as you eat each meal, do it in remembrance of him. Even if it's us eating birthday cake at, for, for Lucy's birthday, it's remembering that his body was broken for us and that because of his grace, because of his mercy, I have a family. Because I'm pretty broken, I'm pretty messed up, and God in his grace gave me a family, and I get to celebrate with my daughter, her birthday. And so that's exciting, and that causes me to be grateful. So, um, yeah, so that's the, that's the homework, if you will, for today. Just as you to eat each meal, just do it in remembrance of him. You don't have to say it out loud. But just as you do it, 
do it in remembrance of him and just say thank you jesus for what you went through and so with that being said i'm going to pray for you and then i'm going to ask one question after jesus we thank you so much for what you did that god you would cause us to remember that what you went through on the cross was not easy that you were a human being taking on the sin of the world And you did it for us because you loved us. That perfection came down to cover us in perfection. So Lord, I ask that we would be grateful and live our lives in thankfulness before you. And that we really would see lives changed and transformed, including our own, for your glory and that that would just continue. And that today, all, as other churches meet together and, and take communion, that God, you would bless them as they come together and remember what you did and went through. You would bless them and that there would be salvations in your name. Amen. Well, thanks again so much for uh, joining. And for, anyway, love you guys. Appreciate you. And I feel like this year for Good Friday went a lot smoother than last year, at least on my end, because there's no pets jumping on me, nor children. I don't know how Mary's doing right now. Her screen's off. So I'll find out. <laughs> <one. laughs> anyway, thanks again so much, everyone. And I love you. You have a great rest of your Easter. Bye. Happy Easter, everyone. <laughs>